I lost 15 pounds over the 2023 holiday season, and I'm about to tell you exactly how I did it. But first, a quick introduction. I'm Shay, a holistic health coach and busy mom of two toddlers. And I'd like to welcome you to this little kitchen where I share about healthy living, weight loss, cooking from scratch, and just an overall holistic approach to living life. And I've been on a weight loss journey since having two babies back to back in 2020 and 2021. I'm currently a total of 65 pounds down. I lost the first 55 while I was breastfeeding my second child. If that story is of interest to you, please leave me a comment below letting me know and keep a lookout for that video because that will be coming in the future. The strategy for losing weight while breastfeeding was completely different than the strategy that I'm using now. It was a different season of life and I had different needs. I recently completed the breastfeeding journey with my daughter and now I'm on to phase two of my weight loss journey. Most of 2023, I have not been focusing on weight loss. I was really focusing more on just maintaining and completing the breastfeeding journey with my daughter. Shortly after Halloween, I noticed the scale was inching up and I knew that my gut flora was out of whack. Way too much candy, way too much sugar, and the candida levels were certainly just out of balance and I found myself craving a lot of sugar and that's not normal for me. So I knew I needed to act and it was a perfect time to act since my daughter had just weaned and I could really jump into this next phase with both feet without having to worry about her nutritional needs on top of my own. So on November 11th, I started that next phase of my weight loss journey. I'm about to jump right into all of the details, but I just wanted to mention that if you have any questions that pop up along the way, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. There is a lot that will be left out of this video because I'm trying to just focus on what I did specifically to help me lose that 15 pounds over the holiday season. So without any further ado, I utilized fasting principles that I learned from Dr. Mindy Pels, Jen Stevens, and Dr. Jason Fung. And I crafted my own fasting protocol that really works for my life. Jen Stevens, the author of Fast Feast Repeat, always says, tweak it till it's easy. So that's exactly what I did. Bearing that in mind, just know that this exact protocol may not be the right protocol for you, but that's the beauty of fasting is that it's really quite flexible and you really can find a way to fit it into your life. And what's really amazing is that fasting can benefit most people. And on that note, really quickly, I wanted to take a moment to just talk about who fasting is not for. Fasting is not recommended for children, teens, pregnant women, nursing women, or anybody who has a history of disordered eating. And as always, please discuss with your healthcare provider whether or not fasting is right for you. And of course, do your own research. Read books, get on YouTube, look it up. And before I dive into the rest of it, I just wanted to say really quickly that I did not count calories during this time, aside from two down days that I utilized a 500 calorie down day for. So aside from those two days, I did not count calories. I did not eat any sort of way, no specific diet. I just focused on eating whole foods primarily and cooking from scratch as much as possible. And of course, listening to my body's cues for hunger and satiety. So now into the meat and potatoes of it. What exactly was my protocol? What exactly did I do? I did a protocol that involved intermittent fasting and two down days per week. And as I mentioned before, the first couple of down days that I did, I did utilize a 500 calorie down day rather than a complete 36 hour fast. And that was just to sort of ease myself into it. So after those first couple of days where I did the 500 calorie down day, I did switch to a full 36 hour fast because I really want to maximize autophagy. That is one of the biggest reasons why I am interested in fasting at all. I'm extremely interested in autophagy and all of its health benefits, including better skin elasticity while losing weight. And if you are somebody who is very, very overweight, that's something that might be really important to you if you want to hopefully minimize the amount of loose skin that you might be dealing with at the end of your weight loss journey. Autophagy is our body's natural cellular regeneration process. Wikipedia says, I'm gonna read it so I get it right. It allows the orderly degradation and recycling of cellular components. This is our body's innate healing process and it only happens when we abstain from food for a certain period of time. 
And it's really quite fascinating. I could talk about autophagy for a long time, but I won't in this video. If you are interested in autophagy, I really highly recommend you look it up because, because our bodies are self-healing organisms and autophagy is the process through which that self-healing happens. Okay, so with intermittent fasting and doing two 36 hour down days per week, it's extremely important for me to mention that following each of those 36 hour down days, I had an up day. And during an up day for me, I do no fasting beyond the fasting I do when I sleep naturally. And then just listening to my hunger cues and not eating until I'm actually hungry the next day when I wake up. And this is very, very important because after a 36 hour fast, you really need to refeed your body in order to protect your hormones and to protect your metabolism and to just keep your metabolism functioning properly and even and even heal your metabolism if your metabolism is out of whack from past dieting. In Jen Stevens book, she recommends an eating window of at least six hours and two meals during an update. day. I personally do not track my eating window. Beyond that, I generally just don't eat after about six or 7 p.m. because it makes it really difficult for me to sleep. On days that I did intermittent fasting, I generally aimed for about a 16 hour fast but I wasn't super rigid with it. I think it's really important when you're on any weight loss journey to really be kind to your body, be kind to yourself and not push yourself beyond your limits. It's really important. It's important to gain that self-trust back. When you have allowed yourself to get so overweight, there is a part of you that distrusts yourself. And it's important to rebuild that trust with yourself on your journey back to health and back to wellness. So that said, I generally aimed for about a 16 hour fast, but my fasts varied a lot depending on a few factors like when did I stop eating the day before? How was I feeling? Was I actually hungry? And I would say during the times that I was intermittent fasting, my fast generally ranged from about 16 hours to 26 hours per day. Sometimes I ate OMAD. Sometimes I had a few meals throughout the day. It just depended. Sometimes I had really long eating windows and sometimes I had really short eating windows. I really just have been on this journey of trying to listen to my body and give my body the, the things that it needs, whether that's food or rest. And as I've gone through this process, I can see how incredibly important giving our digestive system that rest period is. And speaking of rest, now I wanna talk a little bit about Dr. Mindy Pels. She's the author of a book called Fast Like a Girl. And her entire book is about how to fast safely as a woman in a way that is not going to damage your hormones and in fact will help protect your hormones. And I don't know about you, but as a woman, I care a great deal about my hormonal health, especially, especially knowing the things that I do now to take care of my body are gonna greatly impact me a little bit later on in life when I go through things like menopause. As I said, Dr. Mindy has a book called Fast Like a Girl, and in reading her book, this is where I learned all about the link between fasting and hormonal health and how to fast properly in order to protect that hormonal health. And just generally how to fast along with your cycle and maximize all of the health benefits available through fasting. Dr. Mindy recommends that you don't do any kind of long fasts from about day 20 in your cycle until the bleed phase starts. And the reason for this is because progesterone is building during that time and progesterone really does need carbohydrates in order to function properly. So from day 20 until the bleed phase starts, basically the week before my period, I do not do any fasting. I do not do any fasting or focus on weight loss really at all. And I know that may seem counterintuitive, but as a woman, we operate in, in this cycle along with our hormones, right? And during this time, that week before our period, often we can find that we feel more fatigued, we feel more hungry, we feel more sluggish, and there's a, there's a good reason for this. And our body is telling us that we need to slow down during that time that that time before our bleed phase starts is also another one of those really restorative times where we should be giving ourselves some we should be giving ourselves some space and some grace and really allow our body to relax and recharge so that when we 
get to that bleed phase and our energy spikes again, we can actually move forward with a lot of energy. One thing I have noticed in my own life is that if I ignore really strong cravings that week before my period, those cravings don't go away even once the bleed phase starts. And then oftentimes that actually will lead to me overeating once I'm in that next phase of my cycle. So I really do try to listen to that. So as I said, that week before your cycle starts should really be a restorative time. I like to use that week or so to really listen to my body, to nourish myself as best I can, and prepare for that next cycle to begin. Most women report that they have an increase in hunger and in cravings that week before their cycle starts. Often the cravings are for things like chocolate or carby foods. Sometimes they just experience a general increase in hunger. Some women are extra fatigued. And it turns out there's a very good reason for all of this. Our body is doing so much internally during that time and cravings can actually tell us a lot about what our body needs. Chocolate cravings can be caused by a deficiency in magnesium and progesterone requires carbohydrates for proper function. By really high quality chocolate, not only is a dark chocolate going to be just better for you generally, it's also gonna have higher levels of that magnesium. You could also take a magnesium supplement. You could get checked out by your doctor and see if you need a magnesium supplement. I love to supplement with, um, with electrolytes generally, and magnesium is one that I have been supplementing with as well. So in summary, I did intermittent fasting with two 36 hour down days, followed each by an up day per week and no fasting the week or so before my cycle begins. It's okay to slow down and have times that are dedicated to restoration on your journey. After all, slow and steady wins the race, right? I find these periods of rest before the sprints of weight loss to be incredibly important to the journey overall. It's a time where I can really observe the changes in myself and get acclimated. I can see the shifts in my cravings and I can start to settle into what a maintenance lifestyle would look and feel like. And it's important to know that too, when you're on a weight loss journey, that when you get to the end of that journey, it doesn't just stop. If you don't have a plan to maintain that weight loss, chances are you are going to gain it back and possibly even more. And you hear that a lot when people talk about dieting. So it's really important if you're on a weight loss journey to also be thinking about what is your plan for when you get to that goal weight? How do you intend to maintain that goal weight? My goal has never been about perfection. The goal is to be consistent. The goal is to see an overall downward trend in my weight over time, while seeing an upward trend of my general health and wellness. And I believe that's happening. I have more energy now than I have in a long time. I mean, look, I started a YouTube channel. I finally launched this YouTube channel that I've literally been thinking about and dreaming about and wanting to start for years, probably, probably well over 10 years. Speaking of which, if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help me. And I appreciate each and every one of you so much. And if you find my story motivational and inspirational, please share it with someone you think could benefit from this information as well. I would love for you to stick around and, and it would be an honor to walk beside you in some capacity on your journey as well. So I have way more energy than before, less aches and pains, better and more stable moods, no sugar cravings, very few food cravings at all, and I feel like I'm back in touch with my hunger and satiation cues. And I lost 15 pounds over the holiday season. What? Fasting is amazing and I feel amazing. And I wanted to share that with you as well. Jen Stevens calls fasting the health plan with a side effect of weight loss. She couldn't be more spot on because that's exactly what this feels like. And that said, thank you so much for joining me today. Please share this with anyone you think would be inspired by this story too. I appreciate you so much and I wish you the best on your journey as well. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks so much. Take care.